Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of this uh, brand new series uh, on our channel, uh, CIRA International. Uh, we titled this uh, Scripture Twisting 101. Today's passage uh, that we are going to cover comes from the Gospel of Luke. It is Luke 19.27, and this is what it reads. This is coming from the mouth of Jesus, who says, But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, Bring them here and slaughter them before me. David, well, your th comments. Think about what you have here, right? Think about what you have here. Christians claim that Islam is violent. They complain about Muhammad's commands to violently subjugate unbelievers, to fight people based on what they believe. And yet, here you have Jesus commanding his followers, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. So if Islam is violent, then surely Christianity is as well. And aren't Christians a bunch of hypocrites for bringing up violence in <laughs> religious texts? So uh, that would be the claim against us. And yep. uh, what, what's, what's disturbing is that this argument ultimately comes from popular Muslim apologists, right? And uh, I've seen Ahmed Didat use this. I've seen Zakir Naik use this. And the reason that's disturbing is when a Muslim quotes this to me and says, oh, you're accusing the Quran of violence, but look what Jesus said in, L in Luke 19, 27. I don't automatically think, oh, this Muslim, he's trying to lie to me. I think he heard it, he didn't bother to read it, to read what the passage actually says. Right. So he really believes, he sincerely believes that Jesus uh, makes this command in Scripture. And he's bringing it up because he really believes that this, is, uh, th this, uh, th this would make me a hypocrite for complaining about violent texts in Islam. So when an average Muslim who has probably never read this chapter, let alone the entire Gospel of Luke, let alone the entire you know, Bible, um, when your average Muslim brings something like this up, I think, okay, this person has been misled by others. But when someone like Ahmed Dida brings it up, I'm pretty sure he's read this chapter. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure he's read it. And if you have read this chapter and you quote that verse and you tell, you, you tell your listeners that Jesus here is commanding people to slaughter his enemies before him, that he's telling his disciples to kill anyone then I, I can't respect you anymore. I, I, you, 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 you can only be a liar, right? So, uh, and by the way, it's not just Muslims. Sam Harris, one of the, the, the supposed uh, uh, four horsemen of the atheist apocalypse, right? Uh, one, of the, one of the main atheists. Uh, he cited this in, in his TED talk uh, to show that it's not just Islam that has the problem. Christianity also commands its adherents to commit violence. So, the, the, and there, I'm just assuming Sam Harris has never read it, right? He, he read it, he read it from someone quoting it in an online article or something like that because he doesn't really deal a lot with carefully handling Christian texts. DDOT spent a lot of time building his arguments out of the Bible, so I'm assuming he actually read the passage. Now watch what happens when we actually read the passage. So again, this is supposedly Christians being commanded to kill the enemies of Jesus. Watch what happens when we actually read it. So this is, the, the, the passage here doesn't begin in verse 27 of Luke 19, it begins in verse 11. So just read the passage here. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. So they think Jesus is getting to Jerusalem and the kingdom of God is about to show up. He said, therefore, a nobleman, so notice what he said, he starts, this is called the parable of the 10 minus, right? Right. This is called a parable. Why is it called a parable? Well, a parable is a story. There's a point to be derived from the story, but it is a story. And Jesus starts in verse 12, a story. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. So the nobleman in this story is going to go away and then come back. Calling 10 of his servants, he gave them 10 minas and said to them, engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. By the way, this happened historically. A Jewish leader had to go to the Roman Empire to, to get his kingdom and, and then come back. Um, but his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. So he's leaving when he's going away to receive his kingdom. People rebel against him and say, we don't want him coming back. We don't want them. So he's, they, they send a delegation after him saying, hey, don't let this guy rule over us. 
When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know what they had gained by doing business. So he goes away, then he returns. The first came before him saying, Lord, your mina has made 10 minas more. And he said to them, well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, Lord, your mina has, ba has made five minas. And he said to them, and you are to be over five cities. Then came another saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sell. He said to them, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? And at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. Now, is so now this Jesus... In context now. Yeah, now, is this Jesus telling the apostles, go out and kill people? Of course no, not. No, no. And notice, mm -hmm. none of them did that, right? Exactly. In fact, Christians for three centuries didn't kill anyone. Right? So, it's not until you get to the time of the Roman Empire, where the Roman Empire adopts Christianity and already had a Roman Empire kind of way of doing things, that you start getting any sort of violence in Christianity. Uh, up until then, the violence is done to Christians, it's not Christians committing violence. That's right. But notice, if, if Jesus was commanding his followers to go out and kill, why didn't any of them run out and kill if it was a command? That should be obvious to anyone, to anyone who's just reading the verse. When we read it in context, Jesus is telling a story about a nobleman who goes away to receive his kingdom. His enemies send a delegation after him saying, don't make this guy a leader. Then he returns in authority and says, those, those ones who didn't want me reigning over them, bring them here. Bring them here and kill them in front of me. Now, so in context, this is a parable. Jesus is telling a story. It's a character in the story who says, bring them here and slay them before me. So notice, if you're going to say, well, Jesus told a story in which a character in the story says, bring my enemies here and, and, and kill them. Therefore, that's the same thing as Jesus telling the disciples to do it. Well, notice, there you could say that I command, I just commanded people because I just told the story. I told the exact same story. That's right. Exactly. So there you could, you could actually take a video clip out of this video and have just a clip of me saying, as for those enemies who did not want me to rule over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. You can say, oh, look what, look yeah. what David Wood said. And now David Wood, yeah. David Wood is calling on his viewers to go around killing people, right? So you could say that if that's how desperate you're going to be. Now, the only thing you can say in response here, once you actually read the passages, that this parable is about Jesus, right? This parable is about Jesus because Jesus is about to leave. Jesus is about to go away. And Jesus is about to... Jesus is about to die, then be resurrected, then leave. But notice, even given that, when, when is the judgment? When are, when are Jesus' enemies judged? They're not judged until he returns. They're, they, 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 they're, they're judged when he returns at the second coming. So if you're an atheist like Sam Harris, why on earth would you ever be worried about that? You don't believe Jesus is ever going That's to right. return. So there's no, there's no place where this could ever be relevant to you. In fact, you should love this passage if you're an atheist because Christians aren't to judge in the meantime and going around killing people. It's Jesus when he returns who is to judge, right? So if you believe that's never going to happen, what do you have to worry about? You should say, amen, Christians, read this passage because in this passage, you're not allowed to go around subjugating people or anything like that. Jesus judges when he returns. So you could say that, but if you wanted to say, well, you know, he does say, as for those enemies of mine who didn't want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. Um, it, that's referring to the judgment, but according to what the other things Jesus said, exactly. that's the angels, him and the angels exactly. who are doing the judgment, right? Yeah. So where are Christians yeah. ever commanded to go and do violence? It's certainly not here, right. and it's certainly not anywhere exactly. else in scripture. So notice the fact that this is where Muslims have to go, and this is where some atheists even have to go to show, she you see Christianity as violent as well. Yeah. That shows you just don't have a case to make. You just don't have a case to make from Scripture that Christians are ever commanded to do violence. And as for the, uh, the, the people like Ahmed Didat, if I were a Muslim, 
If I were a Muslim and I watched a, a, a clip by Ahmed Didat, which you can watch, they're, they're available online, where Ahmed Didat is quoting this and trying to convince the audience that in the Bible, Jesus commands his followers to go around killing people. That's right. If I saw that one time, I would, uh, there would be one of two conclusions to draw. Either this man is deliberately deceiving his listeners or he's completely ignorant. He doesn't know what Jesus said in the scriptures. In either case, why are we listening to him? Why are we listening to what this guy says if he's trying to deceive us? Why are we listening to what this guy says if he's ignorant? No, e either way, we should not be listening to this man when he talks about Christianity. Yeah, yeah. And yet, he's considered their greatest apologist of all time. A guy who's either ignorant or a liar. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, brother. That was more than enough to explain to our viewers about Luke 19.27, and especially for those Muslims who love to use it. Hopefully, you're enjoying this series. Until we meet you again in the next video, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash Sierra International.